Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today we'll be looking at the um, VET and budget for our grade 12s. In the first session, we'll be looking at the VET, and then the second session will be uh, will be the budget. Um, now, without any waste of time, let's quickly uh, go or remind ourselves with the theory of VET. Um, remember, VET stands for for um, value added tax. And it is charged at fifteen at fifteen percent. Now in our question, uh, the question that we'll be doing um, today will be will be calculating um, what uh, what is what the business must pay to uh, to, uh, to SARS, or what uh, uh, what SARS must pay to the uh, to the uh, to the business. Remember, uh, a business as a as a registered vendor uh, collects VAT on behalf of SARS and and records, and then uh, at the end of the financial year. Uh, it must now reconcile the VAT collected uh, by the business uh, versus uh, the VAT they've paid or they've incurred as as the business, and then and then determine whether uh, um, they owe SARS or SARS is owing the business. So now we'll be looking at that. Remember, uh, there isn't. Um, an exact uh, a method to to calculate VAT receivable or VAT payable. However, uh, one will not be will not be um, uh, penalized to use uh, the T account to calculate the VAT or. One will not be penalized to work with, um, uh, um, uh, say, uh, if, the, if uh, there's an output VAT, you, uh, you subtract, and then if there's an uh, uh, input VAT, you, uh, 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 you add. One will not be penalized using one of the methods. One of the methods, it is still uh, uh, fine and acceptable. And, and what is important is for you to uh, to arrive at a point where the vet is uh, 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 arrive at the point where you must now say whether the business is owing SARS or SARS is owing the business. So now we'll be looking at that, and then among uh, um, among the transactions. That we will be, uh, we will, uh, will be, we will be getting. Um, if now, say for instance, this transaction is inclusive of VAT, then it means now you uh, will divide by hundred and fifteen. Uh, and then if the transaction is exclusive of VAT, uh, it means now. Will divide by will divide by hundred. You know? uh, 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 this formula uh, is very important. This almighty formula is very important. Uh, we are going to use it a lot uh, in this session. Amount times what you want divide by what what you have. Right? Say for instance um, the amount or the transaction. Hence, hence I'm saying. You analyze the transaction and be able uh, 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 to analyze and uh, and uh, 
the transaction and determine if it is inclusive of it or if uh, the transaction is exclusive of it. If it is if it is inclusive of it, then it, then it means you must say amount times by fifteen divided by what you have. Uh, this amount will, uh, will must be inclusive of it. So now you divide by fifteen. If the amount, say for instance, is exclusive of it, you will times by fifteen and then divide by divide by 100 because this amount that we are having here is is exclusive of that meaning it doesn't uh, have that <clears throat> so now we'll be looking at that uh, we, we have two questions uh, for the day uh, for our session <clears throat> uh, let's quickly look at our question we have question one it says the Xicostos accounts for VET every alternative month. All goods and services are subjected to VET at a standard rate of 15%. Remember, I said to you, either method is still uh, uh, acceptable. No, one will not be penalized. Whether you use a straight line method, adding and subtracting, it is still fine. No. But uh, in our session, we are going to use uh, the T account. We are going to use the T account. On the debit side, it will be input VAT. And then on the credit side, it will be output VAT. Now, what is the difference between input VAT and output VAT? Right? Remember, you analyze the transaction. Now, if... Um, the transaction, um, the money went, say for instance, the money goes out of the business. Ne. Then we charge input VAT. Input VAT is uh, charged whenever the money goes out of the business, right? And then output VAT, after analyzing the transaction, now you must determine now whether the money goes, came into the business or went out of the business. So now when the money comes into the business, you charge output, right? So that is the difference between input and Output at the end of the T account, you must be able now. Uh, 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 when you close it off, you must be able to um, uh, to conclude as to how much is the business owing to the to, uh, to SARS, or how much is SARS owing to the to the business that we look at that immediately we are done with our transactions remember input vet when the money uh, uh, goes out of the business you charge input when the money come into the business you charge you charge output vet very important now let's let's look at our let's look at our um, question um, as you can see here, uh, there's our question, calculate the final amount payable to SARS on 31st July 2018. Now, and then we have, including the, uh, um, in the first column there, including uh, uh, are the amounts inclusive of VAT. And then uh, uh, the second one is the amount exclusive of VAT. And then the last column is uh, the VAT. The VAT there is already calculated for you. Now, let us start with the first one. Remember I said to you, we'll analyze each and every transaction, right? Now, the first transaction says balance due to SARS. Balance due to SARS, it means uh, uh, we are owing SARS. We owe we owe SARS. Therefore, uh, that has to be uh, uh, credited, has to be output. Now, 
in our T account here, we'll write 6,665 name. You don't write anything. You don't write the accounts there uh, on the T account. What we want to see on the T account are the figures only. And then whether uh, now you must write that figure either on the uh, on the on the debit side or on the on the credit side don't write anything any account there just write the figures now um, uh, if the question now uh, this first one balance due to sars it, uh, i said we are owing uh, we were owing sars on uh, 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 on the 1st of july 2018 but if the question was uh, uh, this transaction uh, was balance to buy SARS. It means SARS uh, uh, was owing the business. Ne? Then we could have debited that. Ne? We could have debited that. If the transaction is a uh, uh, amount due or balance due by SARS, we debit that. Ne? It means uh, we, uh, we still have to receive that uh, 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 from from SARS, but in this case, it is balance due uh, uh, due to SARS. We are owing SARS, hence we have credited the six thousand six hundred and sixty-five. Right now, let's go to the next one: <coughs> cash and credit sales invoices. Cash and credit sales invoices. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, irrespective of whether uh, the sales was on uh, 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 sales were on credit or cash, VAT is supposed to be charged. Like now, in this case, if we we were to analyze this this uh, transaction in um, cash and credit sales invoices, um, the VAT there is hundred and eight. Thousand. Remember, sales. It means uh, the business made sales. Name. We have received money. Now, when we receive money, uh, 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 the the uh, the money uh, came into the business. I said we must charge output. So now, on your output here, credit side, you write hundred and eight. Thousand. Then, very important. Analyze your, analyze your uh, um, uh, transaction. Then, if the money is received, then, by the business, you charge output. If the money uh, uh, went out of the business, you charge input. Then, right. Now let's go to the third one. Um, purchase of trading stock. Here, uh, here, the VAT is not calculated. There's a question mark. It means now you must say 534,750 uh, minus 465,000. Uh, you get 69,750. Name. 534,750 minus 465. Right, you get VAT to the value of sixty nine thousand seven hundred and fifty. Now to purchase, remember to purchase is to buy. Then the money goes out of the business. Therefore, you must charge input. This sixty nine thousand seven hundred and fifty, it is the input. You put it there on the debit side of your T account. Sixty nine thousand. 750 all right then we go to the next uh, to the next um, transaction stock returned to suppliers stock returned to suppliers there's a vet there of 480 now ladies and gentlemen whenever you come across a, a, a transaction of returns, you ask yourself initially uh, what 
did with Hajj. Name. Right. In this case, we are returning stock to the supplier's name. It means initially we bought, and then when we buy, the money went out of the business. We charged input, input VAT. Right? Now, now that uh, we are retaining goods back to the suppliers, you cannot charge input but now you charge output VAT. You cannot charge input twice. I repeat. Stock returned to suppliers. When you come across a transaction of returns, ask yourself, initially, what did you charge? Remember, we bought. That is why we are retaining this time around. Now, when, when we buy, the money goes out of the business. Now, we charge input, input VAT, right? We charge input VAT. Now that we are retaining goods back to the, to the suppliers, we must charge output, output VAT, right? And then how much is it? It is 480. We must now charge output, output VAT. Very important. Whenever you come across a transaction of returns, ask yourself initially, what did we charge? Right. Now, let's go to the next one. Uh, it says here, uh, debtor's accounts written off. Debtor's accounts written off. When we write off uh, a, a, a debtor, when we write off a debtor, uh, uh, the company loses. When the company loses, yes, we do. Uh, uh, the, the company loses because now we are writing that uh, uh, a debtor off, right? And then the, uh, our bad debts increases, now, right? Now, when the company loses, I said to you, uh, uh, when the company loses, we charge, we charge input. All right. When the company loses, we charge input. And then in this case, uh, we have 915 rand as our, as our input. Input VAT. Right. Then we go to, then we go to uh, the next one. The next one is uh, office computer bought on on credit ladies and gentlemen irrespective whether we bought cash or on credit that will always be charged in this case here let us analyze that transaction it says here office computer bought on credit when we buy on credit uh, the money went out of the Business. When the money goes out of the business, we charge input, input VAT. In this case, we must, we must calculate uh, the VAT. Given to us is 9,800. 9,800. Which is inclusive. Is it exclusive or inclusive? It is exclusive of of VAT, meaning um, uh, if it is exclusive of VAT, we must now divide by, we divide by 100, and then we times by 15. 9,800 times 15, divide by, divide by 100. 9.8 9 times what we want, divide by what we have. 9.8 times 15, divide by 100, you get 1,470. Remember, I said to you, we, we, uh, this 1,470, it is input, input VAT. Why input VAT? It is because the money went out of the business. Now, so now, uh, we'll record it here, 1,470. All right. Then let's, let's look at uh, the question again. 
discount allowed to to debtors ne discount allowed to debtors when we allow debtors a uh, uh, discount to debtors as the business the business loses ne the money went out or the money goes out of the business therefore we must charge input input vet but this amount here of 10810 uh, they say it is inclusive of vet if the amount is inclusive of vet you divide by 115 and then you times by 15 this 10810 is inclusive of vet that is why we that is why we uh, we divide by 15 by 115 and then we multiply by 15 all right right now let's check how much is our um, vet 10810 times 15 divided by 115 you get 1410 410 remember <clears throat> Uh, said uh, discount allowed to debtors. When we allow debtors discount, the business loses. Name, the money goes out of the business. Therefore, we must charge input. Name, we'll charge input here. We'll record uh, that thousand four hundred and ten under other input. Name. Now that we uh, we we are done. Name, we can now close off our T account. Remember, I said the purpose of this T account is to establish whether the business is owing a, 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 a SARS or SARS is owing the, the business. Now, that we'll only find out uh, after we have closed off the, uh, our, our T account, right? Let us close it off. Let us close it off. Obviously, the bigger side would be the credit side. Uh, 6,665 plus 108,000 plus 480. You get 115,145. You write the bigger amount on both sides. 115,145. Right? Now, here is the... Uh, uh, we must now check well, now how much is the difference from uh, from, uh, from our input side so now it will be 69750 plus 915 plus 1470 plus 1410 the difference is 70 um, uh, the total is 73545 you subtract that from 115145 it means now uh, uh, the difference is for 1,600 rand, right? Now, you must check. Uh, remember from your, uh, from uh, your criteria name, uh, this is our balance carried down. And when, when our balance carried down is on the debit side, it means our, uh, the balance brought down would be on the uh, 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 when the balance carried down is on the debit side, it means our balance brought down would be on the credit side. But here we will not write a uh, uh, balance brought down, but we'll write payable. Ne? Payable for 2600. It, uh, it means now <clears throat> we uh, will be guided by our balance brought down. If our balance brought down is on the a credit side, then it means now um, uh, the business must still pay uh, uh, this amount to, to SARS. Say, for instance, uh, this balance carried down was on the credit side. Ne? Then it means our balance brought down would, would have been on the debit side and then we could have written here receivable. In this case, uh, uh, if our this amount is on the debit side like this, we are saying it is receivable. It means the SARS 
uh, uh, is owing the business. Now, thank you very much. Uh, th uh, that is our, our question, question one. Uh, let's look at our question two. Let's look at our question, question two. <coughs> let's look at our question two. Let's have a look at our question two. Um, let's go to our question two. We have another uh, a vet question. <clears throat> we have another vet question. Right, it says there, <coughs> it says there, question two, vet calculations, Peter Traders is a vet registered business. The standard rate of vet is 15%. Calculate the correct amount of vet. The business has to pay, show all workings <clears throat> information the bookkeeper john prepared the vet control account for the tax period ending 31st may 2020 and arrived at a vet payable of 43820 however the internal auditor has identified the following errors and omissions which must still be brought into account to calculate the correct VAT payable. <clears throat> now, in other words, here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a bookkeeper that has calculated uh, uh, the VAT payable to an amount of 43,820. However, uh, there were at the internal auditor has identified errors and, and omissions, meaning the 43,820 uh, that he said it is payable to uh, to SARS. We must it it has to be adjusted using uh, transactions uh, from A or adjustment from A to F, right. <clears throat> Now, let us look. The first thing now, remember I said to you, um, uh, we'll use the T account. We'll use the T account, but very important that you, um, you know that Your, your input VAT is on the debit side and your output VAT is on the credit side of your T account. Now, your input VAT, when, when, when do we charge input VAT? We charge input VAT whenever the money went out of the business or the business has incurred some expenses or an expenses, right? And then when do we charge output VAT? We charge output VAT whenever the business has received money, then we charge output, output VAT. Then what is the purpose of this T account. The purpose of T account is for us um, when we close it off to determine whether the business is owing SARS or SARS is owing the business. Right. Now let's look at the let's look at our question. Let's have a look at our question. And again, 
uh, before we go to our question, whenever you get an amount or, 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 or a transaction with an amount that is inclusive of VAT, you divide by 150. You times by 15%. Whenever you come across a transaction that is exclusive of VAT, that VAT has not yet been added, you divide by 100 and then you times by 15. Very important. Now let's let's look at our question. Let's look at our question. Sales invoices omitted from the debtors journal including VAT. This amount 10833 is inclusive of of VAT. Now let us calculate, let us calculate it. Ten thousand eight hundred and thirty three times we said it is inclusive of VAT. Am I right? Yes. So we'll we'll multiply by fifteen and then divide by 115. Right, now let's check. 10,833 times 15 divided by 115. You get 1,413. Right. Now you must ask yourself now that whenever the business made sales. Ne. It means the business has received the money. Ne. When we receive the money, remember I said to you, we charge output. When the money is received, that vet that is, uh, will be charged there or is charged there is output, output vet. Ne. Right. On the output here, we'll write the 43,820. That, uh, uh, um, that is payable. Remember, they said it is that payable amount of 43,820. So we must adjust this 43,820. Uh, and, 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 and it is clear that they, they said that payable. So if it's payable, it means we are OSRs. Hence, uh, uh, it has been credited. Yeah. But if SARS was owing the business, we could have debited. Uh, we could have debited uh, uh, at that amount. Yeah. Now here, uh, the thousand four hundred and thirteen that comes from uh, the sales invoices uh, from transaction A. Uh, remember, I said to you. Whenever the money is received, the VAT that will be charged there is output. So here on the output, we'll write 1,413. <clears throat> All right, and then you go to B. Your B, it says damaged goods returned to suppliers. And then this amount is exclusive of of VAT. No. Uh, it is 18,600. When the amount is exclusive of VAT, you times by 15, correct, but then you divide by, you divide by 100, because this amount is exclusive of VAT. It doesn't have VAT. That is why we divide by, divide by 100. Now, let's quickly check how much is our VAT there. 18,600 times 15 divided by 100, you get 2,790. Now, let's go back to our question. 
damaged goods returned to sub suppliers. Now, when we return goods to suppliers, you ask yourself first, <clears throat> initially before returns, it means we bought, right? And then, uh, and then we, we, um, when, when uh, uh, we, we were buying, we paid or we were charged input because now the money went out of the business. No. We were charged input. Now that we are retaining the goods, we must charge out, uh, output. We must charge output to the value of 2,790. I repeat again. Whenever you come across a transaction of returns, ask yourself initially what type of VAT did the business pay. In this case, um, because now we are retaining goods to the suppliers, it means before we bought, the money went out of the business and then we were charged input. Now that we are retaining goods back to the very same suppliers, we must charge output. You cannot charge input twice. Right. <laughs> same applies if uh, we, uh, we were uh, debtors returned goods back to us. Now, if debtors returned goods back to us, uh, then you must ask yourself, uh, initially, we did sell these goods to these learners, right? I mean, this, <laughs> uh, these debtors. We, we sold goods to these debtors, we received money, and then we charged output. That is before the returns. Now, when they return goods back to us, these debtors, we must charge now input. All right, All right. Let's go to C. VAT on sundry business expenses omitted. Now, in this case, VAT has already been calculated for us. Analyze the transaction. VAT on sundry ex uh, business expenses omitted. Now, 6,818. 6, sundry business expenses. Now, the money, uh, the business is spending. The money goes out of the business. Now, when the money goes out of the business, you charge input. Now, now here, you write uh, on the table side here, you write input. Right? Then we go back to our question. VAT on discount received from suppliers. Discount received is an income to the business. Now, we are receiving as the business. So when we receive, uh, 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 um, we must charge output, right? And then it is how much? 750, 56. 756. All right. Then we go to, to E, VAT on bad debts recovered. What is bad debts recovered? In our income statement, uh, we could have recorded that under Part B, uh, that one just underneath gross, um, gross profit, other income, under other income there. This is the income. No. We are receiving. Am I right? So now, when we receive, we charge, I said we must charge output. So now, that 112 rent will be our output. Right. There's it. 112 rent. Right. Now, let's go to, 
Let's go to F. F says here, that on bad debts was recorded on the wrong side of the VAT control account. VAT on bad debts was recorded on the wrong side of the VAT control account. Right. Bad debts. Bad debts is an expense to the business. Right? Right. Now, when um, a, 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 we charge VAT on bad debts, I said, when the money goes, when the business loses, when the money goes out of the business, we charge input. All right. But in this case, it says here, VAT on bad debts was recorded on the wrong side of the VAT control account. Meaning, Instead of um, recording 92 rands under input, instead of recording that 92 rand here under input, it was recorded on the wrong side. No, the wrong side will be the output. Now, we must first correct the error and then secondly, record a uh, what was supposed to have been uh, uh, recorded. Ne? Right? One, remember they said uh, that 92 rands uh, was recorded on the wrong side of the VAT control account, meaning it was recorded on the output. Ne? So now we are going to record that on the, on the um, under input. Now this 92 rands is to correct the error. Remember, it was on this side. It was at this side. Therefore, we subtract it. Now, the effect is, is a zero. Now, now, secondly, we're supposed to record what was supposed to have been recorded. Remember, this is VAT uh, that is charged on a bad debt. Now, bad debt is an expense. We are losing. And when we lose, we charge uh, uh, we charge input. Ne? So now this 92 rents again will be recorded here on the on the credit on the credit uh, uh, on the debit side. Ne? Or someone uh, will just say 92 rents times two, and then uh, debit that 184 rents there. Right. So um, uh, we are done with our adjustment. Or, or is now we must close off. We must close off the T account. When we close off our T account, remember we check which side is the biggest name, and then you, you write the total on both on both sides. In this case, uh, the biggest side is the credit name. Now let us check. Uh, with how much? How much is the total there? 43,820. 43,820. 43,820. Plus 1,413. Plus 2,790. Plus 91. So now you write the total on both sides. 48,890.91. Now here we must check how much is our balance carried down here. Remember I said to you, when you use your T account, uh, 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 if your balance, you'll be guided by your balance brought down. If your balance brought down is on the credit side, then it means uh, uh, the business must still pay uh, uh, VAT to, to SARS. No. But if the balance brought down is on the credit side, it means uh, the VAT is receivable from SARS. It means SARS is owing 
the business. Now, let's look at the, at the credit amount there, 68,818 plus 92 plus 92 minus 48,891. So we have 41,889, right? This is your balance carried down. It is fine. But remember, if your balance carried down is on your debit side, your balance brought down would be on the credit side. But here, instead of writing balance brought down, you uh, because it is on the credit side, you write payable. All right? And then it is for 1889 Say, for instance, your balance carried down was on the, uh, was on the, on the credit side, then it means your balance brought down would have been on the on the debit side. But you could have written here a uh, receivable. The receiver receivable. That will mean that uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the the business is still uh, uh, to receive that amount there, meaning the SARS must pay the business this amount. But in, the, uh, 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 in this case, we, uh, the business is owing the uh, SARS. Right. Now, um, that brings us to the end of our session one. Remember I said to you, session one uh, will be based on uh, VET, and then uh, session two will be based on uh, on budget still, or uh, for uh, for both or, or both for our grade twelves, right? Um, I thank you very much. Uh, let's take a break, and then I will come back with with budget. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back. Um, to the second session, um, and then it will be based on uh, budget. Um, this is one of the topic that we uh, that we are doing in our uh, uh, with our grade twelves. But then, what is budget? Uh, remember, ladies and gentlemen, here basically uh, the the business. Pro, uh, projects, or one one would say uh, the business is estimating uh, uh, how 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 they will uh, um, uh, the business will collect from from the adapters. Um, uh, the the business is projecting how it will collect from the adapters using adapters collection adapters collection schedule and again we'll be looking at uh, how the business projects how it will pay their creditors using uh, um, using creditors payment uh, payment schedule right and within this topic we we also uh, uh, look at the at the cash budget. Ne? We'll also look at the cash budget and projected income statement. Right and. Each and every topic um, uh, in our grade 
twelves um, ATP. It goes with uh, with internal controls. You're supposed to get internal control questions. and financial indicators that goes uh, 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 with this topic. But for today, as far as our question is, uh, is concerned, we'll be looking at debtors collection schedule, uh, and then we'll be looking at the catch budget some internal controls and financial indicators. Um, now, what uh, 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 what is the difference between uh, debtor's collection schedule and creditor's payment schedule? Before we can uh, we can start with our question, debtor's collection schedule. The business here, I said, like I said earlier, uh, it will now be uh, be projecting. How, in terms of uh, uh, its credit terms, how it is going, um, it is expecting their debtors to pay. Now, for us to uh, to do or to complete debtors collection schedule, we need to uh, to be we need to check two things, um, uh, and we need to know we need to know them that. Uh, for us to do debtors collection schedule, we must do um, we we prepare debtors collection schedule with credit percentage, credit sales, as well as the terms. These two completes our debtors collection schedule. Now, um, through the information that will be provided. To, to you be able to identify how much is percentage for credit sales name as well as the terms terms will be given to you right now for credit patch, uh, for creditors payment schedule creditors payment schedule um creditors payment schedule now here the business is projecting how how it will pay its uh, its creditors name its creditors but a uh, uh, very important for us to prepare creditors payment schedule you need to to identify the percentage of your credit purchases ne? your percentage for credit purchases how much uh, percentage uh, uh, of the stock is the business buying on on credit and then secondly uh, the terms as well the terms uh, for our creditors name so now that is the difference between a bit, uh, between the two debtors collection schedule the business is um, is projecting how uh, uh, how are they going to collect from uh, their debtors. But here under creditors payment schedule, it is also projecting, but how, are, uh, how much are they going to, uh, uh, to, to pay to, uh, to the creditors? Now, um, firstly, uh, as far as our question is concerned, let's look at our question. Let's look at our let's look at our question name. It says here, Blossom Pty Limited sells expensive ladies dresses of high quality. They also repair dresses for customers, but they aim to break even on this service. On this service, customers are allowed to buy dresses for cash or on credit, but they are required to pay cash for all repairs. Customers. Uh, are allowed to buy dresses for cash or on credit, but they are required to pay cash for all repairs. The information relates to the budget period ending 31st May 
2021. Now we are required to do 1.1, which is comp uh, to, uh, for, uh, for us to complete the debtors collection schedule for March 2 to May. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, let the answer book guide you. Now let's look at our answer book. That's it. There's our answer book. Um, it is debtors collection schedule. Um, remember I said to you, for us to do debtors collection schedule, we must first find out um, the under information. How much is our credit? How much is our credit? Um, how much is our credit sales percentage? Credit sales in this case, it is 65%, right? 65% is our credit sales. And then uh, secondly, the terms name. The terms, as you can see under B, expected debtors collection based on the past. Um, the first bullet, the, you can even summarize for yourself, you know, um, uh, just to make uh, uh, that easier for you. Uh, the first bullet says the 40% collected in the month of sale, less 6% discount for early payment. Now, six, uh, this is 40%, I get, for uh, in the same month. All right. To get five uh, six percent discount right and then number two uh, term number two says a uh, 50 percent collected in the month following the month meaning one month after a uh, 50 percent will a uh, will pay 50 percent one month after right and then at, uh, term number three is eight percent collected two months after the sale. Name eight percent is two months after. Okay, two months only eight percent will pay. Name right now very important, ladies and gentlemen. The last bullet says that two percent regarded as uncollectable two months after the sale. Name. 2% is regarded as irrecoverable or uncollectable. So now, in your, in your, in your, in your debtors collection schedule, you don't, you don't, you, you don't uh, collect uh, that 2%. It is irrecoverable. So now you cannot include it here. It will be very wrong. Right. Now, in terms of our question, we now supposed to look at 1.1. Remember I said to you, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. remember what I said to you? I said to you that um, for us to complete debtors collection schedule, we need two things. Percentage of credit sales, in this case, they said to us 65% of credit uh, 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 of total sales are credit sales all right and then here under b it is our it is our terms firstly let's get uh, the credit sales for may name so that we can collect after uh, uh, let's go to our question let's go look at a under information A, total sales and cost of sales. Remember, the 770000 for May. This is the total sales name. Now, total sales includes credit and cash. What we need is 65% that uh, uh, it was given to us as credit sales. Now, it means now we'll say 770000 times uh, 65%, you get 500,000 
500. That is your credit uh, sales. 500,000, 500. All right. Now we can start to, uh, to collect now because now we have our uh, uh, credit sales for May. Then we can start to collect. Now, when we collect, um, uh, we go through per each month. We go through our our terms. Now, let us check. Now, for May. Now, the first month is January. Now, now, right? First month is January. Now, and then, uh, remember we said... Um, we are collecting from March, March, April, and May. But that look at the terms. We collect for March. I get it. Now, forty percent is expected in the same month. Same month is January. We don't have January here, right? Then we go to the second term. Still at January, uh, it says fifty percent one month after. Fifty percent one month after. One month after January is when. It is February. We don't have February here. Right? And then the last one is 8% two months after. Two months after January will be uh, uh, February, March. Here. It has already been, uh, been calculated for us. You can even say 200, uh, just to check it, you can say 204,750 times 8% divided by 100 you'll arrive at 16,380. Meaning, no, uh, 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 nothing for April and, and May. No. Don't include the 2% that is uh, regarded as irrecoverable. Please. Then let's jump over to, to February. No. February, um, um, First, first term, name. Uh, it says 40% in the same month. Same month is February. Remember, uh, we are done with this one. Now, now we are here. Name. February, same month is February, but we don't have February here. Then we go to the next term. Name. Next term, uh, term two, it says there uh, one month after. One month after February is, is March. It has already been calculated for us. Right? Right. And then we go to the uh, term three. Ne? The term three is 8% two months after. Two months after, after February is when? March, April. It has already been calculated for us. You can verify it to say 250,250 times 8 divided by 100, you'll, you'll get 20,020. Meaning there's nothing to collect for May. Right? Then we go to March. Now, we're done with February. We go to March. March, uh, um, term one, it says same month. Now, same month is term one. Here. Yeah. It has already been calculated for us. Now, it means they said 364,000 times 40%. Divide by 100 times 94% divide by 100. Remember, those that are pay, uh, uh, that those that, that will be paying in the same month will get a 6% discount. Meaning, out of the amount that they must pay, uh, uh, they will only pay 94% of that amount. Yeah. Right. Then we go to then we go to term two. We still at at March. Now, term two says one month after. One month after March is when is April. Now, it has already been calculated for us. You can say you can even cross check it to say three hundred and sixty four thousand times fifty percent divide by divide by hundred. Right? You'll arrive at one hundred and eighty two thousand. Now. Then we go to term three. It says two months after is 8%. So now it will be 364,000 times 8 divided by 100. Two months after March is uh, May. 
April and May. So now it will be 364,000 times 8% divided by 100, you get 29,120. 29, then we go to April. Let's go to April. Same month is April. It has already been calculated for us. Then we go to at, uh, term two. Term two says one month after is 50%. So now it will, uh, we will be saying 409,500 times by 50 divided by 100. 409,500 times 50 divided by 100. You get 204,700. 750 right then we go to the last one which is may which is may may same month is is may i guess that is the first term right it says 40 percent same month and then they will get 66 percent discount same month is may name look there's may i get there's may uh, then it means now we'll be saying 500,500 500 times 40 divided by 100 times 94 divided by 100. 500,500 times 8% times 40%, sorry, times 94%. It is 188,188. Then we are done. We can now add. Please add to get our part mark there. 188,188 108, plus 204,750 plus 29,120. You get 422,058. That's your debtors collection schedule. Ladies and gentlemen, for us to complete our debtors collection schedule, we need two things, percentage of credit sales as well as the terms on how the debtors are expected to, uh, uh, to pay over a specific period of time. Then we go to 1.2. Let's go to our question. Let's go to our question. 1.2 says they calculate the missing amounts indicated by A to D in the cash budget. Ne. A to D. Right? Let's go check. Let's go check uh, our cash budget. A. Cash sales for april cash sales for april right good question this one remember um remember that if our credit sales is 65 percent if our credit sales is 65%. It means the remaining percentage here will be uh, cash sales. Our credit sales is 65%. Then it means uh, uh, cash sales. It is the difference between 100 and, and 65, or remaining balance between 100 and 65. So now it will be 35%. That is your cash sales. That is your cash sales. Now, 
Let's check. We're looking for April name. Then you go to your information A. Look there. There's our there's our um, total sales. Remember I said to you, total sales is combination of both credit and cash. Now our question, we want cash, which we know it is 35%, and then it will be 35% over 100 times 630,000. So now it will be 35 divided by 100 times 365. Let's check. 35 divided by 100 times 630,000. So now we, we, we have 220,500. Please write the, the final answer under the column designated for it. Right. Or alternatively, let's look at our question. Or our budget. No. Yes. We can look at the... Uh, here, here is April. Ne? April, remember this credit sales, our, uh, our credit sales is 65%. Ne? We can still arrive at the cash sales of ours using this 409,500. Ne? This 409,500 amount, it will be amount times what we want is 35 and then what we have is 65. What we have is this 409,500 rand, which equals to 65%, which, which equals to 65%. 409,500 times 35 divided by 65. You go straight to the answer. Right. Right. Now let's go to, uh, to B. It says a increase in the loan from Janet Bloom. Now let's go to our question. Check the, um, the loan. Uh, B says ink loan from Janet Bloom. C information D. Now, information D says here Janet Bloom has provided a loan to the business at an interest rate of 9% per annum. Interest is not capitalized, and one third of the loan is, is repaid to her on 31st December each year. As the, as the company was still experiencing cash flow problems, uh, um, owing to the coronavirus lockdown in 2020, Janet agreed to increase her loan to the business on 1 April 2020, 2021. Now, um, uh, what the question wants here, let's go look at our uh, question. It, it wants a loan, the amount of loan in April. Name. The balance of the loan in, in, in April. But look at your payments. Look at under payments here. Uh, we're supposed to have, look, look here. Yes, we don't have the loan. That is what we want. But we have interest on the loan. Remember they said uh, in April, end of March, the company increased the, uh, they are loan. Né? That is why when you look at your interest on loan, uh, for, 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 for April, it is 2,625, and then for March, it's 1,365. Now, ours is to check how much was, uh, 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 was, the, was the loan in uh, in April, uh, we can work that out using two methods, uh, but let us try the first one. You see, we have 1,365. That was before the, the 
increase of the loan. Now, right. Remember, uh, um, I will just do this uh, example. Now, uh, for us to have arrived at, for us to have arrived at thousand three hundred and sixty-five, we said loan times. Uh, how much is the rate here? Quickly, um, the rate of the loan is nine percent, right? So now we set loan times nine divided by hundred, times one divided by divided by twelve. Then we got thousand three hundred and sixty sixty-five. Then we got thousand three hundred and sixty-five. But what we want now is the loan. Né? Now we need to work back. Né? When we and we, and when we, when we work back, um, you know that uh, we work from the bottom up. It it means now we will be saying thousand three hundred and sixty five times hundred. We want the whole amount. Divide by nine times by twelve. Divide by divide by one. Then you must get. The uh, the amount of of the loan before, which is hundred and eighty two thousand, right? This is before the increase. Now, let's go to our question again. After the increase, look at the interest on the loan it was two thousand six hundred and twenty five. Two thousand 625, um, we'll say 2,625 times 100 divided by 9 times 12 divided by 1. Then you get, um, you will get the um, 2,625 times 100 divided by 9 times 12 divided by 1. No. It's 350,000. Ne? Right. Therefore, the question wants an increase in loan from Janet Bloom. All right. So, therefore, your answer would then be 350,000 minus 182,000. 350 minus 182, you get 168,000. All right. Now, here is the second method. Um, here is the second method. You can look for the difference between uh, interest, uh, interest on loan before and interest on loan after. Now, let, let us check it. 2,625. Minus thousand three hundred and sixty. The difference is thousand two hundred and sixty. Then we'll times by hundred. We'll divide by by one. Thousand two sixty times hundred. Divide by nine. Sorry. Divide by nine, you get fourteen thousand. This fourteen thousand, you times by twelve, and then you divide by one. You'll still arrive at hundred and sixty-eight thousand. Right. Now let's look at C. C says here yeah, salaries of sales assistant C information E salaries of sales assistant C information E ne. E salaries of sales assistant the sales assistant all earn the same monthly salary they were promised a 5% increase in salary with effect from 1 April 2020 21 ne with effect from 1 April, meaning 
at the end of April, their salaries will have an increase of 5%. The business employed two sales assistants in March and planned to employ an additional assistant from 1 April 2020, now, 2021. Now, let's go back to our budget. Now, let's go back to our budget. Let's look there. We have 22,400 rand. Now, we have 22,400 rand prior month. Now, now, and then the question is very clear that before April, there were only two, two, two employees. Now, so now 22,000, each one was earning 22,400 divided by two. Uh, each was earning 11,200 rand. But remember, the business said uh, in, in April, they will, uh, uh, from 1 April, they will give their employees 5% increase. Okay. So now, here, uh, it means now we'll time this 11,200 by 105 because now that is what we want. We want the amount which is inclusive or which is which includes 5%. I get and then you divide you divide by 100. So it's a 11,200 times 105 divide by 100, you get 11,710. Uh, 60. This 11,760, uh, 11, remember, for April, we'll, uh, the, business, the business will now have to pay it to three employees. Ne? So now the total there would be 35,210, 35,280. Right. Then let's look at D. It says the rent expense for March. Rent expense for March. Rent expense for March. C information F. Let's look at F. That directors secured premises in a local shopping mall from Propco Limited with enough space to cater for the expected number of customers. Rent is charged per square meter according to the floor area. The rent increased by 11% per annum, commencing from 1, from 1 April. Now, in other words, rent for, rent for April had an, uh, an, increase of, had an increase of 11%. Let's look at our rent. Yes. This 39,960. They said to us that it includes an increase of 11%. But in uh, March, we want rent for March, which was before the increase. Name. But now, uh, on our position here, we have 39960 which is the rent after March, which includes... Uh, uh, 11 percent uh, of in, uh, of of increase now we'll be saying now that 9906 times what we want is 100 percent the rent without increase and then what we have is 111 this amount here is what we have and it includes 11 percent of increase hence we have divided by 100 and 11, 39,960 times 100 divided by 111, you get 36,000. All right. And now let's look at um, 1.3. Let's look at 1.3. Let's look at... It says they refer to, to information G and H, advertising. Now, ex explain the decisions that the directors took regarding, um, reg 
regarding the budgeted and the actual expenditure for advertising in May. Quote figures or calculations. Now, explain the decisions that the, that the directors took in, uh, in May and regarding the budgeted and actual expenditure for, for advertising in May 2021. Quote figures or calculations. Now, Let's go to, let's go to um, May. Now, uh, remember advertising. Uh, business people, uh, I will tell you that um, advertising has to do with sales. Now, advertising has to do with, with sales. And uh, let's check G and H, right? Let's go to G and Age, that's a name. It says uh, what decisions did the company took regarding advertising? Name. Uh, they said so. Regarding budgeted and actual expenditure for advertising. Now let's look at advertising. Look at the budgeted. The budgeted was thirty thousand, but the company spent how much? Forty two. Thousand. So that is the first point. You know, that one, the company has exceeded the budgeted advertising by. by 12,000. If you can check there, I think uh, the difference between 30,000 and 42,000 is 12,000. By 12,000. Please, ladies and gentlemen, when you quote, now, uh, uh, if you were to comment, attach uh, a figure to it for you to get two full marks. Please. Exceeded the budgeted advertising by uh, by 12,000. Or you can even work it out uh, in terms of percentage to say the difference of 12,000 and then you divide by 30,000. Now, you'll get 40% 40, uh, 40 even if uh, you can just say uh, uh, the directors have, have exceeded the budgeted advertising by 40%, yes, it is a comment plus a figure. Whether it is a percentage, it is still fine, right? Now, um, remember, and, and again, when you respond, you check how, how many marks are allocated for that particular question. Now, in this case, it is four marks. It means you must have two points, right? Now, let us check uh, another one, another big decision that they took here, name. Right? Um, advertising. Let us check um, at uh, advertising. Um, let's check advertising here. Look advertising there. You see, for, for April, advertising was 12,000. But look at, at May. It is now 30,000. 30, it means they've increased uh, uh, advertising cost from 12,000 to 30 to 30,000. Know? Here you can write that they've increased advertising cost by how much? Let's check. Um, by 18,000. Uh, the difference between 30,000 and 12,000 is 
18 is 18,000. Or somebody can just write there, advertising was increased from 12,000 to 30,000. It is still fine. Or somebody will even work out the percentages name uh, to say uh, 18, 18 18,000 divided by 30,000. Uh, 18,000 is the difference again. And then times 100, it is 60, 60%. Still fine. As long as you attach your comment with a figure, still fine. You'll get two full marks or four full marks there. All right, let's go to the next question. <clears throat> still on 1.3. Still on 1.3, it says here, um, the directors ask you for a report on the effect that the advertising decisions have actually had on customers and sales in May 2021. Provide two points that you would include in your report code figures or calculations. Explain how the decline in the national economy has affected the average amount that customers spent in May 2021. Okay, now let us deal with the first two points. Provide two points you would include in your report code figures. Right. Let's go there. Information G and H. Um, now we are looking at the effect of that advertising name. Right. Look at the, the, um, the effect of advertising you'll only see on your, on your sales, right? Right, now let's look at age. You'll see that uh, the actual sales is 690,000. When the budget was 770,000. Thousand. So now that is the first point that actual sales is lesser than the budgeted. Now, actual sales, actual sales is lesser than the bud budgeted. By how much? L let us check. The difference between 770 and 690,000, it is 80,000. By 80,000, your comment must always have a figure attached to it. Right? Now, let's look at the second point. Let's look at the second point. Now, we, we are looking at the effect of advertising ne. Uh, we are looking at the e effect of an increase in the advertising of the company look at the number of uh, of customers ne. budgeted was 110 but actual was how much 130 35 ne. right that's your second point. The actual customers were or are more than the budgeted by 25. 135 minus 110 is 25. Actual, actual number of Customers is 
more than budgeted. by 25. Comment goes with, with a figure. Explain how the decline in the national economy has affected the average amount that customers spend in May 2021. Code figures. Remember, uh, uh, by the look of the IEM, um, yes, we did increase our advertising. As a result, uh, uh, the business budgeted 110, but the, uh, the actual customers came was around 135. All right, and then the sales, um, the sales budgeted was 770,000, but the actual sales was now 690,000. Now, this question says here, we must explain how the decline in the national economy has affected the average amount that a customer spent. So now, we'll be looking at that. Remember, budgeted sales for the customer was, um, uh, we'll check, we'll check. Let us check uh, the uh, 770,000. Ne? Uh, and then compare it, divide it with 110. Then we can get uh, uh, averagely uh, how much was the business expecting from the, uh, from the or per customer. So 170,000 divided by 110 is 7,000. Meaning per customer, the business was expecting around Seven thousand. Name. So now, but now, let's look at the actual customer that came, and the actual or the average uh, 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 money that was spent per customer. Remember, we have six hundred and ninety thousand, and then we must just divide by one thirty-five. Name. It means the actual. Uh, uh, the average customer spent around 5,111. This was the budgeted, and then this was the actual. Ne? This was the actual, right? Now, that is our first point. Ne? Budgeted sales budgeted sales per customer Per customer was seven thousand, but dropped. Um, you can even say uh, show the workings here. Ne? Where seven seventy thousand divided by hundred and ten, seven hundred and seventy thousand divided by hundred and ten. Ne? you'll get seven thousand, but dropped. Dropped to. 5,111. In brackets, you show your workings. Now, 690,000 of sales here, yeah, and then you divide by 135. Now, 690,000 divide by 135. Now, now, let's look at the second point. Right? The second point would be that uh, look at the number of customers. We have budgeted 110, but uh, we got 135 instead, which is which was more with 25. Now, that is the second point. Advertising. Though advertising attracted attracted 
um, 25 customers more than budgeted more than budgeted but because of economic challenges they did not have the buying power they did not have the buying power that's it right and then let, let at, at the last um, one there would be that customers preferred to uh, to repair uh, their dresses instead of buying new uh, a new new a new dresses let's look at the fee income for uh, for repair service let's look at the fee income for repair service as you can see the budgeted was 15000 but uh, uh, but the actual was 21000 which was 6000 more than the budgeted uh, in other words uh, and that that is our third point it means the um it means the customers preferred to have uh, uh, their dresses repaired instead of buying the new ones because of economic challenges right um, then we move to uh, the second last one comment on whether uh, on whether consumable stores have been well controlled or not code figures or calculations now, uh, consumable stores let's look at consumable stores um, consumable stores for repairs consumable stores remember consumable stores are are, are items that are consumed on a daily basis now, that we call consumable stores uh, as they repair they consume this uh, 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 um, these items like uh, maybe uh, in this case, uh, since they are repairing the dresses, would be the cotton, uh, the zips. Those are consumables, something that is consumed on a daily basis. Consumables were 4,200 budgeted, but the actual was 5,200. No. Right. So now, yours was to comment whether uh, consumable stores was well controlled or not now here you must write now actual consumable stores has exceeded look there exceeded um, exceeded uh, uh, budgeted by exceeded budgeted by thousand three hundred ten actual consumable stores exceeded exceeded budgeted by thousand three hundred and twenty now therefore it was not well controlled therefore consumables were not well controlled now consumables were not well con controlled right always ladies and gentlemen when you respond especially on the part of where you must comment name always observe how many marks are allocated for that uh, for that particular question and and uh, try to attach uh, um, a figure to your uh, to your comment always please now let's look at 1.4 at 1.4 the question there says refer to information f and h rental and customers the owners 
of property Propco Limited informed the directors of Pro Blossom Limited of the increase in rent planned with effect from 1 April 2021. In other to economize on rent, the directors asked the owners Propco Limited for a reduction of the area rented from 1 May 2021. Propco Limited agreed to this request, calculated the reduction of the area rented in square meters. Now, uh, because of economic challenges, ladies and gentlemen in this question uh, the company asked uh, you know to f f uh, for them to save on the rent uh, they've reduced the space where they were where they were operating so now we'll be looking at uh, at uh, 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 we'll be calculating the reduction of the area area rented without any waste of time let's quickly look at the uh, our uh, our question. Let's quickly look at our question now. Right. Look there. Floor area in uh, uh, in square meters is how much? Hundred and twenty per square meter. Right. Then we look at the rent expense. Look at the rent expense. Budgeted was 30, uh, 39960 and then actual was 31960 It's because of the reduction. So now let us calculate the difference of that reduction first. Reduction. Right. Uh, 39,960 minus 31,968. The reduction is 7,000. Um, 39,960 minus 31,968. 990, All right. Then we check. We check now. Um, um, remember the square meters. Name. Remember the square meters is 120 per square meter. All right. We'll check. Uh, 39,960 and then we divide by 120. You get how much? You'll get 333. Ne. This was per square meter before the reduction, right? Now, therefore, we, we have a, a cost per square meter before the reduction. Now, this is the cost or the difference uh, between the rent after the reduction. Now, remember our question, we... we we want to check how many square meters did uh, did we did we reduct, All right? So now here you'll say therefore seven thousand uh, seven thousand nine hundred ninety two divided by three hundred thirty three. Name seven thousand nine hundred ninety two divided by three thousand three hundred thirty three. It means uh, there's a reduction of 24 uh, meter, meter, meter square. Uh, we have come 
to, to the end of our question, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, time is always, uh, people will tell you that time is jealous. You know, um, I thought we'll have uh, another session, but uh, there's a next presenter coming. Uh, but, none, but nonetheless, I, I, I hope that um, the session was fruitful and, and uh, the, the impact also will be uh, positive towards our, towards our performance from our learners and the results in general. And I thank you very much. Uh, take care of yourselves until we meet again. Thank you very much.